hello 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 today we are going to be going over some seasonal stuff and just kind of a gear progression guide you're going to be just learning how to kind of progress with gear what the crystals are um with the difference between dr evasion um we're going to talk about brackets and just kind of give the general advice for new players so that way they have at least some kind of guidance working towards you know their end game goal and at least have an understanding on how to play this game to some degree because i know when you first start and every time a new season happens there's an influx of players and then people are super confused and they have no idea what the hell they're doing so my goal here is to kind of just give you guys a guiding hand kind of directing you towards how to upgrade your gear and what to look for and what not to look for early on and then leading towards the mid-tier player or mid yeah mid-tier player into any game before we get started with the gear and stuff and start playing with the good stuff let's talk about the ap and dp brackets so right away um, you're going to see these like bonus AP things here on Garmoth.com. If you want to see this, just go to Garmoth.com and you can find all this information yourself. But just to explain what this means, every time you hit a certain number of AP, you will reach a bracket, which then will give you bonus hidden AP that you cannot physically see. So for example, 249 AP all the way to 252 AP, you will gain a bonus hidden stat of 57 AP. And the same thing goes for DP brackets as well. If you hit, let's say 301 DP, and that goes all the way to 307, you will reach a 14% DR bracket, which is damage reduction. And once you go past 307 and the moment you hit 308, you gain 15% and you know, so on and so forth. That's how these are going to work. The main goal here for all of your like just kind of end game goal and the end result, depending on what you're playing, if you are a DR player, you are going to be looking for 281 Kudum. Once you reach there, you're kind of at a solid, comfortable spot where you can grind most areas, minus the super, super end game zones. But 281 to 284 Kudum is kind of the ideal spot. You don't necessarily need it per se, but if you're trying to grind effectively with most characters that can absolutely destroy and are very good at grinding, 281 is the comfy zone. Once you are 281 Kudum, everything past that is just gravy. So don't, don't worry too much about that other than hitting 281 Kudum. And as for DP, the main idea here is to hit 359 DP. This is kind of where everyone is sitting at right now in terms of soft cap. Most end game players are not necessarily end game players, but at least like soft cap end game players are roughly around 359 DP. That is, of course, on console. That is console details. If you are on PC, you can go much higher than most of these, and that's just kind of how PC works right now. We're on two different, you know, sp spaces of the game, so just bear that in mind that console gear is a bit different. We are currently locked at C10 Kafra levels, so getting past 359 is very hard without building hybrid accessories like Narcs or Renaros rings or orc and rad belts or anything like that or using uh, accuracy and evasion accessories or not accessories i'm sorry um off hands it's very hard to go past 359 without using dp gear so it's just kind of not feasible so now that you guys understand how all that works let's talk about tuvala gear now so we're going to start with dr and then i'll talk about uh, evasion here in a second i've got two builds here so this one is for eva so whenever you see EVA up here, I'm talking about specifically evasion players. And then when you see DR up here, I'm talking about damage reduction players. And if you guys are wondering what classes are DR and what classes are evasion, you can kind of look that up yourself. There's actually a, a, a guide that Choice made a while ago. I'll put a link to it somewhere, either in the description or in the uh, comment section. And you guys can watch that and he will go into detail about what class does what. And it's it's pretty self-explanatory once you understand which, which characters are using which. But right now I'm using a Guardian template because this is a popular class. And for over here, we are using a Striker template because this is again another popular class that tends to get picked very often for new players so striker is evasion guarding is the damage reduction so we need to look here right so we're at 247 249 ap and 309 dp so if we take a look at our brackets here 249 we get a bonus hidden ap of 57 and we are at 309 um dp so we get um let's see here 15 percent dr so we're, we're looking pretty comfortable all right now the important thing to note about your gear is accuracy accuracy is important because this will allow you to hit mobs at a more accurate rate which means the more you're hitting them the more damage you're doing which means more clear speed 
and the faster you clear, which means more money per hour. This entire game is based around money, so being able to kill mobs effectively is going to be the, the absolute end result of any grind spot. So as you can see right here, these first four, Miramok Ruins, Aukman Temple, History of Ruins, and Star's End, these are the main points of what you want to grind. Everything down here is kind of just not even in your plane of existence. Don't even pay attention to this shit. So these first four is what you're going to want to max out on. So once you get 100% hit rate in most of these areas, you're going to be pretty much good to go. Uh, you guys just have barely enough to kill Aukman Temple pretty effectively. Trees is not that bad either, and neither is History or Star's End. You could grind any of these pretty comfortably with this accuracy. Not to mention if you factor in extra additional stats like let's say um skill add-ons with accuracy let's say you have like a four percent accuracy rate as you can see it goes up by quite a bit and this is not factoring in buffs either which means we could do a couple different buffs here so let's say real quick we're going to create a new buff bar so we're going to do body enhancement you're going to use a simple cron meal and then we are going to use a uh, frenzy drought and that's kind of it realistically i guess you could get church buffs too if you really want to so church buff, you're going to get blessing and bravery and XP, of course, because you're probably going to want that. And uh, that should be about it. Um, yeah, that should be good. So with that being said, now, as you can see, we will have this bar right here that we'll be using. And if you look, our accuracy went up to 780. So we click none. We're 760 with no with no bonuses. Right. But we click our bar here for our HP buffs and everything and we will get 780 accuracy and if we go back to pve hit, hit calculator you will notice that we pretty much have 90 percent across the four important zones that you're going to want which is pretty good and again factoring in accuracy add-ons and whatnot you're you're solid you're really good now the question is how do we achieve this level of accuracy so you're going to want to look at your crystals this is very important because you don't want to burn through expensive crystals that's very annoying when you have to remove them because it costs real money to remove the crystals yes i'm aware that you can do a quest that allows you to make crystal extraction tools but i just am not going to do that nor am i ever going to do that because i hate questing but it is what it is anyway cheap crystal options are going to be regular whom crystals not to be confused with han whom's you're going to be using combined magic crystal whom these are going to give you a little bit of accuracy some evasion not not a lot it's, it's just enough stats to kind of get by and it also gives you extra hp which is pretty nice so you're going to put these whom crystals in your tuvala helmet and your tuvala shoes that's pretty much what you're going to do with that your chest piece there's a couple things you can do but personally i would run dark red fang crystals these are a bit on the expensive side they're like 78 million a pop on console it's not super expensive you can kind of knock both of these out in like one grind session it's pretty easy uh you can the same could be said for most of these but you don't want to put like let's say like kobe's in there like kobolinus these crystals you don't want to put like gins in there these are like 300 mil a pop and they're not really worth it uh, at the moment so especially for Tuvala gear, it's just not really something you should use. What most people are using are special EVA crystals. These are completely bone dry on the market. Getting these is an absolute hassle. So good luck with that shit. But dark red fang crystals kind of sit on the market here and there. So I would recommend getting these. It gives you some damage uh, reduction and it also gives you some resistance. So that way, you know, mobs can't knock you down or stun you or stiff you. It'll give you some kind of CC resistance. So these are my go-to pick for the chest piece. For the gloves, we are going to be using Bond Vipers. Now, depending on what kind of class you're playing, you're going to either want Bond or Wands. As you can tell, Bonds give you attack speed and Wands give you casting speed. So depending on your class, like if you're a wizard, you're probably going to want the Wand Crystals. And if you're playing like, I don't know, a fucking Guardian, you're going to want Bond Crystals for the attack speed. So that's sort of what you're going to be working with in the gloves. And then for your offhand, Corrupted Magic Crystals, this is non-negotiable. You absolutely have to use these. If you're using anything else, you are wrong. If anybody tells you to use anything else, they are wrong. Only corrupted. There is no crystal for your awakening weapon, and you're not going to have to worry about this for a very long time. So don't even don't even look at this right now. And as for your main hand, you are going to use precisions. These run for about five mil a pop. Actually, they're like far less than that right now. But uh, normally you would run L cars if they're cheap. But right now they're kind of going up in price, so you don't want to run these just yet. You will be getting these eventually, but not right now for your Tuvala gear. Just run the Precisions. They're a nice alternative and they'll last you a good while. 
Okay, let's hop on over to the evasion side of things for my EVA players. You, you're kind of going to do the same thing. It, there's not really much of a differentiation here because it's it's too vala gear. You're going to be grinding. You're not going to be looking to PvP. So you're not going to really need to switch anything to any kind of like hardcore shit. But I guess for the sake of if you wanted to PvP, I would change the Han Hooms to like agility crystals for 20 evasion. That's a good idea. I would also definitely swap to special evasion. That is like you should definitely have these because it's going to make you far tankier in PvP. And then for shoes, um, you're going to run one uh, one history of one adamantine or you're going to run two adamantines and two history. It's kind of preference, whatever works for you. As for your gloves, same thing. Bond Vipers for your offhand. It's going to be corrupted. It's non-negotiable and precisions once again. But that's that's pretty much it. Now, before we move on into the second part of this video here, I want to talk about these journals really quick. I need to stress to the new players, these journals are absolutely necessary. You need to do these. I hate telling you to do these because this is possibly some of the worst content in Black Desert, but I I don't know why they did it this way, but you have to do these. If you do not do these, you are losing out on extra stats. If we remove all of these extra logs and books here, you will notice we lost a shit ton of stats. We went from 247 AP all the way down to 241. We lost a couple brackets, but if we activate these again, you will gain your stats back. So this is why I stress it, why it's important because it will allow you to hit higher AP stats and higher DP stats to where you can get those brackets that you need. So if you're on console, you can only do these green ones highlighted here. If you are on PC, you can knock out every single one of these. So I highly recommend that you get these going before you start upgrading your Tuvala. I mean, you, you can kind of upgrade Tuvala as you go, but I would recommend looking up on YouTube all of these extra um, books here and try and knock out as many as you can. It's going to be very tedious and it's going to be very annoying and boring and you're going to absolutely loathe doing this, but you absolutely have to. So with that being said, let's move on to the actual kind of mid tier player gear. So from Tuvala, this gear can net you a lot of money in quite a few spots, okay? Just to, just to show you guys, for, for example, here, 247, 249, I want to show you guys what, what you can make with that kind of money real quick. So with full seasonal Tuvala gear, full seasonal, all right? History of Ruins, check this out. Look at this. So you guys can make 520 million silver with 250 AP. 250 AP. This is how much you can make. Granted, it's probably a little bit less than that, more around like 400 to 450, but that is still good money. Basically, two hours equates to about a billion silver. So for two hours of your day, you can make a billion silver. And then you do that every single day for a month. You're looking pretty solid for a upgrade path and gear progression. To put things into perspective, if you're making a billion silver a day, right? And then you do that for seven days a week, you're making seven bill. You do that for four weeks, four weeks in a month. So if we look at this here, boom, you are making 28 million silver a month or 28 billion silver. I apologize. Now with 28 billion silver, you can do quite a bit. That's pretty much most of your accessories. Ring of the Crescent Guardians right now are roughly around like five bill or something like that. So you need two Ring of the Crescent Guardians. So we're going to do that times two. So it's going to cost you 10 bill. You can buy this in a week. 10 bill. You can buy two of these rings in one week. These, on the other hand, are a bit more pricey. These are about seven bill a pop, so you're going to need about 16 bill. So since you need 16 for these two, you're going to need about two weeks to buy both of these. And then this basilisk belt is going to buy is like, what, five bill? You can buy this in a week. So in just a little over a month, you could have full 10 accessories and be solid and good to go. Mind you, per season, you can buy or not necessarily buy, but pick as a reward a Kaposha necklace or you can pick a Kaposha ring or a Kaposha earring. I wouldn't necessarily go with the ring if you ask me, or you know, it's not really worth it. I would go with either the belt, ring, or neck. I would always recommend pick the neck first. The neck is always good because this will last you forever. So the neck is the key important note here, but everything else, you just buy the, these and slowly upgrade. Now, to answer the question on where should I start? Well, what should I work with first? Well, the main bottleneck here is gonna be your AP. DP is not as important because there's tons of spots where you don't need a lot of DP to kind of get shit done. So AP should be the focus point. So instead of working on like your armor and whatnot, I would work on these weapons. So these bottom three weapons here, you should knock out right away. If you do the Jatina quest line, you can get a pen dandy and a pen kudum pretty easily. It's not actually very hard. 
and it's only going to cost you like maybe six bill depending on the mats in the marketplace and whatnot so instead of paying like 13 billion for a weapon you would pay like four or five on your first run just look up Jatina Pen quest line and you will be able to figure out how to do all of that and you will be able to get your first pen weapons pretty quickly. So my recommendation is get the dandy and get a pen kudum. This is first priority here. Now once you do that, you're going to purchase a black star weapon. In my opinion, this is very good and it will last you a very long time. Especially if you are doing nothing but grinding, it is very important because you get extra mob damage plus 32. And then you combine that with the Kudum plus 62 AP to monsters. So these two are just giant powerhouses and will allow you to grind that much more effectively. Now, once you have your weapon squared away, you're going to start moving around towards your accessories, right? So I would buy the Crescents first and then I would buy the belt and then I would start working on the earrings last. Like I said, mind you, you don't need a lot of DP to grind most areas as long as your character is solid and you know your add-ons and how to play your class effectively and move around, you're not gonna really need high DP in order to grind. So real quick, I just kinda wanted to showcase how easy it is to grind with minimal amounts of gear. We are at Star's End right now. This is kind of a mid-tier player zone. I am on my full pen Tuvala seasonal character. And uh, just to show you guys the gear, I'm running RBF crystals. These aren't even accuracy shit. I'm even running the wrong fucking glove crystals. I'm running wands. I'm supposed to be running bonds but they were not on the market so i just bought these garbage ass crystals but yeah i'm not really running the most optimal setup even for these i'm running a fucking red spirit crystals because i'm pvping on this character more than anything else so my entire setup for grinding is completely wrong but i'm going to show you guys how easy it is to actually play on seasonals and grind with like minimal amounts of dp mind you i'm 309 dp so i'm going to show you guys real quick how much damage i take so we're gonna go ahead and get hit and look at this Look at this. I, I'm taking a lot of damage. I can, I can die here. It's very, it's very easy for me to die here. I, I can 100% die. But with that being said, as long as you know what you're doing, you guys can actually kind of make this work a little bit. So if you all you have, I don't even know how to play this character, mind you. I really have absolutely no idea how to play this character. I'm just going to mash buttons and just hope to God that I, that I can make this work because I really don't know how to play Musa whatsoever. What is it like that what is it this move that move nope that's the wrong move hold on how do i do the move there we go that and then this and there you go cool kill the mobs yeah I, it, it is what it is i popped my e-buff by accident come over here we're gonna, we're gonna pull these mobs here all right well what is it like this and then we go like that and then this and then that and then we go like this maybe and then eradicate into that and then what is it inferno slash backstep slash this I've, I I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. I'll tell you right now, they, 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 this fucking they, I I I know how to play suck Musa for grinding because I did that for a little bit, but I don't know how to play Awakening. It's been so long since I've played Awakening. I just have no idea how to play this fucking character. But as you can see, it is it's not it's not impossible, especially if you're playing a class like Guardian and whatnot. That that is a far easier class to play than this. So. As long as you are playing a class that is going to, you know, allow you to be kind of a bot and do what you need to do. Like, that's kind of like the main goal here is just to sort of play a class that can get shit done very easily. And that's kind of like the idea. But there you go. It's it's pretty easy to grind as a low end character. And like I said, I don't need, I don't even have the appropriate build or proper setup for this character. I am just pressing buttons and praying that it works and it's fine. But that's how easy it is. That you can grind with just a seasonal gear so once you're fully done with your seasonal stuff and you upgrade it to this point as a dr player you're pretty much good to go from this point onwards it's up to you on what you want to do in terms of your upgrade path normally if you want my opinion i would swap these tongue grads for distortion earrings the reason being is that you reach the 281 kudum brackets with black star this is the end game. Once you reach this, you're done. You're good. You all everything after this is just gravy. Even if you swap to a Nuver, you are PVP ready. Look at this 295, 296. You are solid as fuck. You are ready to go. Now, the only problem here is your DP. So from this point, I would continue to grind still and you're going to start building Kaffir levels. So you're going to want to C9 all of your gear, C10 the dim. So do these in increments. It's much more palatable and a bit more like easier to stomach. So you go three, 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 
three, and then you rinse and repeat that process all the way to C9. And once you reach a C9 with all your gear, you're going to start working on Fallen God, which means this dim tree has to be C10. Once you reach C10, you're going to do a quest line and also start grinding Tunkutta, which is Turos for uh, the embers and until you get your flame of despair that's when you can do the quest line to get your fallen god gear so this is what that is so once you get fallen god you're going to tap it to duo and then you're done you're, you're done from here on out you're done now you're at 371 dp you're pretty much soft cap now and you're good to go everything after this point is completely preferential and up to you you start upgrading your gear little by little so let's say you want to upgrade from these crescents. You do the Jatina quest line and you can get a pen pen accessory, which you can get a pen crescent from. Boom, 285, 26, sickle mode. Now you want to buy a Tungrad ring, which is one more AP than a crescent. Good. Now you're going to buy a Tungrad belt, which is one AP more. Good. Now we're up 287, 288, 371. Now we're going to Kafra all of our, you know, you can do Kudum or you can do your Nuver. I personally would do the Nuver, so boom, 301, 302, 361. And then if you Kafra level your um, Dandy, you can be 307 AP. And this is this is the end goal right here, is to be 301, 307 with Nuver. Once you're in this spot, like I said, you're, you're pretty much soft cap, you're done. You, everything else, just start tapping accessories until they go. Now, you're basically going to repeat this same process for evasion players. You're going to do the exact same thing. Once you're done with your EVA gear, or your seasonal stuff, you're going to start tapping Eva gear and getting into evasion. So instead of going um, Begs and Uragons, right, you're going to go Liebers and Muskins. These are going to be the staple for evasion players. You are, you have to run these. You don't necessarily have to per se, but if you're playing like Striker or Mystic, you should run these. Now, as for the crystal setup, it's going to be a bit different. You're going to run Jin Harfias. You're going to run Special Evas. You're going to run Jin Vipers. Uh, you're going to run Corrupt corrupted still and you're going to run l cars and in the boots you're going to run one adamantine and one histria you could do the dr setup and run whom's and everything like that but me personally when i'm playing this kind of character i know how strong striker is so if anybody's going to bother me in my my grind zone i am going to build for pvp and see for dr there's not really a way to do that you like you you, you can build rbf crystals but it's not practical for grinding for striker you can build the most garbage crystal setup and you can still kill mobs like it's nothing also if you're wondering what the crystal setup for dr is it's the han Hooms in both the boots and the helmet and then special evas in the chest Jin vipers and then for your kudum you're going to run corrupteds for your nuver you could stick with corrupteds or you could run with rebellious crystals that's preferably what i'm running right now is rebellious crystals but that's up to you and that's only in my nuver in kudum there's non-negotiable. Corrupteds all the way. You need Corrupteds in your Kudum 24-7. And as for your main hand, Crystal Elkars. There you go. Back to Evasion, your upgrade path here is a bit different. You're never going to use Nuver as an Evasion player. You're just never going to use Nuver. You are always going to keep your Kudum. So the same logic is going to apply. You're going to get your, your Fallen God, right? So you're going to tap it to Duo. You're going to get your full C9 once again. And then from here... You're kind of going to do what I like to call the broken nonsense, okay? This is the fucking garbage shit of EVA players because they always do this. You're going to not worry too much about a Capotion necklace. You can still get it, but instead, you're going to buy a, uh, where is it, a Cecil's necklace. This is the end game build for EVA players. For PvP specifically, you are going to buy this. And you're also going to C9 the Dandy because Awakening Striker is the way to go. And then from here, you're going to buy Distortion Earrings. And then we're going to C10 Arcudum. And there you go. We are now at the broken stages of the game. Oops, I, I forgot to swap the Disto there. But yeah, 281 with Distos and we are 387 DP full evasion. We are big broken. We are super broken. And mind you, you do the same thing. Jatina Questline, get the pen ac or pen accessory. And there you go. You are 284 AP, 387 DP with uh, evasion. And if we take a look over here, our evasion is over a thousand, which is more than what you're going to be looking for. And that's sort of the end game goal here is to hit over a thousand evasion with a uh, good DP. So that way you can offset a lot of damage. And the same process goes for whatever you want to do. You could buy Tungrad accessories to get more AP and push brackets. There you go. So we hit here, go Tungrad Belt. So now we're 286 AP, 387, your 670 gear score. Pretty solid. 
With this, you're pretty much endgame as a EVA player. Like this, the, the only upgrade path from here is to upgrade your accessories to pen, and that's kind of really it. With this gear right here, both from EVA and DR players, you guys can grind virtually anywhere in, in this game. The only spots that I would say are going to be off limits is like Ash Forest, um, Crypt, any of the, like the weird obvious spots where you're going to struggle at. But for the most part, like Monastery, Guy Fins, uh, Abandoned Monastery, uh, Monastery Sakraya, um, literally any of the end game spots that are not the um, ridiculous ones that are like 300 Kudum AP and shit like that. Those are going to be off limits, but everything else in the game, you can grind with this gear right here and this gear right here. You're done. Even if we take a look here real quick, um, 804 accuracy, and then this is 837. So we'll do evasion first, PVE hit calculator. Look at this. You're 100, pretty much 100% across the board. We activate our, our accuracy buff 100% across the board. Even for some of these other spots, you're looking pretty good. You know, for Turos, Ash Force is pretty dog. Don't even worry about that one. But Sakrai is pretty good. Orc Camp is good. Um, everything else, solid as fuck. Same thing over here for DR. We're going to check the PVE hit calculator. Going to activate our 5% again. And we are pretty much 100% across the board. Even Turos and everything, That's you're going to be solid. And there you have it. That's sort of the upgrade path that I would do and how I would handle things. Uh, I know it's a lot to take in, but hopefully that helps you guys to some degree. If you have any questions or suggestions or anything down below, just put them there and I can go ahead and uh, check it out and I'll reply when I can. But that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.